Today, I will be talking to you guys about designing a dark theme using material design. A dark theme is a low light UI that displays mostly dark surfaces with accent colors on top of it. We have heard a number of you guys request a dark theme approach from, from us, and we've heard it. So that's why we have put out some guidance. But um, let me start with our beginnings. In 2014, we launched Material Design. Material Design is a system for creating bold, beautiful, consistent digital products. You, may, you guys may have heard some of our talks earlier. There was, there's plenty of talk about theming, theming, so I apologize if some of the content that, you guys will, uh, that I'm going to um, talk about up front may seem a little bit repetitive. But I really think it would be helpful for us to talk about some of the um, foundations and principles that we saw in material design that would have helped us get to where we are today. I picked a few of them. First, we've all used paper. Material design, with material design, we wanted to create a UI uh, that was familiar to the user. So we wanted to build on this metaphor of using paper and taking visual cues from the physical world in order to bring them uh, to the digital side. And, and here, I'm actually displaying the use of shadows and elevation. Using those same uh, concepts, we have created a spatial model that allows uh, users to find components in consistent spaces. What this means is that this dimensionality affords, us, uh, affords users interactions. In the elevation model, every component has a spot, and it is a consistent spot. Our stylistic choices are also used to create hierarchy and emphasis, giving clear signals to users as to what to see how to uh, guide them through the UI, and how to move forward from one screen to the next. We were glad to see how people have used material design. It unified millions of applications uh, out there in the world, and um, it created a consistent experience on Android, iOS, and web. That consistency was great for usability. Users knew how to use, um, interaction, how to use user interfaces in different um, in different platforms. Uh, however, um, there were a few problems. Here we have Gmail on the left, and we have a third-party mail app on the right. I believe that the, uh, the similarities are super clear. And that was a problem. Users, uh, especially teams that were implementing material design, felt like they couldn't go beyond the aesthetic or the interaction choices that we were making with Gmail. So that sent us back to the drawing board. It was exciting to think through this problem. How would we allow, might we allow for brand expression by building on the usability of material? In 2017, we introduced material theming. Material theming is built on the foundation of material design, and it gives you control, the control that you need in order to express your brand through UI. Material theming is about the sum of small, customized components that add up to deliver a branded and thoughtful um, experience. It is about injecting brand in the UI as opposed to just slapping a logo on top of it. By adjusting different systems inside of material, brands can utilize color, shape, typography, and other systems to build express expressive components that resonate with their users. That brings, us, that brings me to today's talk, Dark Team one of the most requested features over the past year. We have been working in collaboration with the Android team to create an approach uh, to create a dark theme. A dark theme, like I said, is a low light UI that occupies the majority of the space with dark surfaces and uses color as an accent throughout. Dark themes also reduce luminance in the luminance emitted by, devices, by the screen devices while still meeting minimum color requirements uh, in order to improve visual ergonomics. It also reduces eye strain. In products that require efficiency, such as OLED screens, uh, dark theme actually conserves battery. By, um, by turning a pixel completely off, it, we actually use less, um, less energy. We also accommodate dark theme, existing dark theme users, such as those with low visibility, uh, by meeting accessibility color contrast standards. We also apply limited color accents in the UI, so the majority of the space is actually dedicated to dark surfaces. In dark theme, 
We conserve energy, we enhance accessibility, and we use color as an accent. Using these principles, we define material design dark themes by the following properties. First, contrast. We needed to make sure that the surface color that we're using is contrastful enough to the, to the um, content that appears on top of it. Call it type, call it iconography. Depth. At higher levels of elevation, surfaces become lighter. A little bit of, uh, more uh, following this. Desaturation. We desaturate our primary colors in order to be, for them to be contrastful enough against the dark surface, and we reduce the amount of, that, uh, of use that we have for that color in the UI. Those properties give us a really good set of constraints for working. As many of the designers in the room may know, constraints are actually super helpful for knowing how to play and how to build your, um, your different concepts. As you know, material is comprised of multiple systems that work together in order to make a UI. We were able to adjust two of those systems in order to create a dark theme. By, and we also were able to leave the other systems intact. I would like to walk you through what we did on, to, on the two. I'm going to start today with elevation. In light mode, uh, we use shadows to express elevation. The higher a surface gets, the wider of a shadow it casts. In dark theme, the same approach wouldn't work. It's hard to see a shadow against a dark background. In addition to using a shadow, in dark theme, we illuminate the surface of each level at a races closest to the implied light source. The higher a surface's elevation, the lighter that surface becomes. That lightness is expressed through the application of a semi-transparent overlay over a component surface. These surfaces, the surface overlays values, are designed to maximize legibility while ensuring that different elevations levels are discernible from one another. Here, I'm actually depicting all the different elevations that we have in our elevation system with the, uh, with the different values for the transparent overlays. Overlays also add contrast between surfaces and their shadows, making the edges of each, one of the, uh, of each component more discernible and readable. The elevation overlays, and overlays are also not applied to colored components. Here, I wanted to show you an example of what a top app bar looks next to a card. A top app bar actually has a higher elevation um, than, uh, than a card. The difference is actually seamless, um, and it helps us see enough, uh, enough difference between the two components while still continuing to keep um, a consistent experience throughout the UI. In comparison, a light theme relies on shadows, while, while a dark theme relies on both a shadow and a semi-transparent overlay to express elevation. I'm going to move to color. At the risk of stating the obvious, um, we know that, colors would not, that inverting colors would not be enough, right? Uh, yes, it works for black and white. No, it doesn't work for your primary color. Instead, using the material tool color palette generator, uh, we, were, we were able to generate a tonal palette for any brand color. That translates into um, um, a, a set of different choices so you can, make, so you can pick a desaturated tone of your, of your same primary. In dark theme, we um, recommend that you keep your, um, your choices between 50 and the 200 level in order to, uh, for that color to be contrast contrastful enough against the surface background. That was not enough. We also needed to consider strategically how do we deploy color in dark theme. It is not enough for us to just be able to say, hey, desaturate all the colors and continue to, uh, to do the same thing uh, in a dark theme. We also needed to think a little bit farther about what is it that we do with this color. A dark theme should avoid using a saturated color as it doesn't pass accessibility standards, but it also becomes vibration, it vibrates against the dark background, right? Here I have an example of the, of the primary coming from our light theme uh, against the dark background, and it's really hard to see. It makes also, uh, it also induces eye strain. Instead, by uh, having a desaturated color as an alternative, material design, um, material design dark theme allows for this color to be noticeable enough against the dark background and also can serve as an accent throughout the UI. 
one of the most re important relationships in the color system is that of the container color versus the on-container color. What do I mean by that? If you have a, an application that is using white as a container for something, uh, as a color for a container such as a card, you need an on-surface color for it. That's what you use to, uh, to place your text, your icons on top of it. That works very well in Lightning. We pick a white and we pick a black. However, when we pick a primary, it's a little bit of a different thing, right? Our primary needs to also take into account what color would live on top of it. If we have a button that may have a primary color such as a purple, we need to figure out what, I what colored icons should be on top of it in order to, meet, to be contrastful enough and meet accessibility standards. Uh, in our case, we actually picked a white. On dark theme, inverting doesn't really quite work, right? On, a sur on the surface case, yeah, it's an easy one. We make our surface dark, and we make our on-surface white. However, the primary color, remember, has been desaturated. So applying the same white color that we had before wouldn't necessarily work. Instead, we actually pick a dark color to live on top of that desaturated color. The translation of that is that at a component level, the color relationship adjustment let us ensure that text can remain legible in meeting WCAG's meeting uh, contrast ratio standards on both light and dark theme. Here's a comparison of both a button on, on light and dark theme. In comparison, a color scheme in dark theme would not just be a one-to-one -one translation of that of a light theme. It also minimizes the amount of slots that we have. Like I said earlier, with an adjusted color scheme also came a change in our strategic approach to the use of color. Here, uh, we have also thought through the mappings of these colors to different components. Um, to give you an example, in the top up bar, sometimes uh, in light mode, we would actually use our primary as a container color. Instead, in dark theme, we actually rely on the, surf, uh, rely on the surface color in order to be the container color. Those default mappings, mappings have already been changed, so you, don't, you wouldn't have to that, do that work yourself. It would just happen automatically. We also had to consider the implications of these changes to the state system. The states visually communicate the status of a component or interactive element through the use of overlays. In dark theme, we keep the same, those same values, um, but we leave them flexible enough so you can change them in order to meet um, accessibility standards. A dark theme also uses dark gray uh, rather than black. And I know that this has been a, a point of contention in different approaches. We actually decided to go with a gray color. Reason being that dark gray surfaces can express a wider range of color, elevation, and depth because it is easier to see a shadow on top of a, a, gray, a gray color instead of a black color. Dark, surfaces, dark gray surfaces also reduce eye strain as less light text on dark gray surfaces has less contrast than light text on a black surface. The surface color needs to be dark enough in order to accommodate other UI colors and make them legible on elevation surfaces. I'm going to walk you through the process of how we tested uh, these changes. In order to meet AA standards, it is recommended that we meet at least 4.5 to one contrast ratios between the surface and the content that lays on top of it. In material, we also rely on transparencies to communicate elevation in typography and iconography. This approach allows us to simplify color choices, and we didn't really want to compromise that. In dark theme, we also needed to take into account the difference in elevated surfaces. A surface has actually become higher. There's a subtle difference in color. So we also needed to make sure that we thought through all those details in order for them to be accessible. We needed to find a greater contrast ratio than the required AA standard. Because the contrast ratio actually decreases as you go higher up in elevation. Thanks a lot, elevation system. That's how we arrived to this number, 15.8 to 1. Through testing multiple colors, we realized that in order to co call a surface color dark enough, we needed to meet a contrast ratio of 15.8 uh, 15 to 1 between the surface color and, the co and white text on top of it 
in order for this to, be, to accommodate for the threshold that changes uh, through elevation. Testing that was very fun. Uh, this is actually a, a screenshot of my colleague's um, artboard. Um, we did extensive, extensive testing on what is the, this threshold. But it really, we felt that it was very important because it really allowed us to arrive to the next part. What if you don't like our gray? Great. Um, you can still customize it. So our approach is to take the primary, the desaturated primary, use it as an overlay on top of a, the gray that we provide. And it just gives you this subtle hint of color that would feel more harmonious with the rest of the application. Using that new dark primary in our newly minted 15.8 to 1 contrast ratio, we recommend that re you run the same text on large and normal text. Make sure that white text meets or exceeds a AA contrast ratios uh, on all elevation levels. Here I took a, the lowest elevation and the highest elevation in order for, you, for us to do the testing. The result is a surface color that can feel more harmonious with the rest of the UI and other color elements that may appear. As you probably know by now, our team is actually obsessed with testing our own guidelines. Uh, what a better way to do that than go back to our own case studies. We, that's how we came up with them. It was, it was a way for us to test our theming. Uh, and uh, we decided to go and take it for a spin. We set out to create a set of dark themes for each one of our case studies in order to, ch to test our guidelines. I'm going to walk you through one of them. I'm going to walk you through OWL. OWL is an educational app that provides courses for people who want to explore and learn new skills in design, art, architecture, and fashion. OWL's design is, um, is bold in color in its use of color, shape, and typography in order to express its brand. OWL is divided in three sections, learn, browse, and personalize. Today, in the interest of time, I'm going to walk you through one of these themes, uh, learn, in order to show you how, what we did. As you know, a dark theme fills the UI with a dark surface color and uses color as an accent. All was tricky. It was already colorful enough. Making it gray would not have worked. Uh, so we needed to preserve the, um, the uh, boldness of the color expression. First things first. We needed to find a less saturated version of each brand color. Using our, using our tonal palettes, we were able to move to find an alternative at the 200 level in order to preserve a little bit of the boldness of the color. Second, we designed a, we, using our desaturated primary, we were able to figure out a new dark primary. Using that dark primary, we were able to generate different elevation levels to use in the, in the app. Running it through the same text uh, also allowed us to make accessibility standards on both um, the lowest and the highest elevation. The updated dark primary also preserves some of the brand expression that the app already had while being um, more harmonious with other elements in the screen. We also use a desaturated primary for UI. But, however, we retain the light themes primary in order to preserve key branded components. We limited the use to one or two branded elements that highly correlate to the brand. Here's where we landed. A dark theme that applies color strategically and remains bold in its aesthetic. All of these findings would not work unless we make it work for Google. In collaboration with multiple Google teams, we were able to generate a uh, material, a Google material theme, which has been ado adopted widely. You may have, ha have already seen it in your own products. We needed to create a supplemental dark theme for the Google material theme, while meeting a functional and experiment experiential requirements that are already ubiquitous to the brand. First, Google material uses a gray from our own palette as a background. Using gray, reduces the amount of high-intensity contrast, um, in um, high contrast elements like text and icons on top of the color. Using dark gray surfaces also expresses a wider range of color and elevation than that of a black color. It, al it also makes shadows easier to see. In dark theme, 
Google's Material Spell Color Palette desaturates our primary colors while still um, allowing the same amount of breadth of use from, uh, coming from the palette against a dark background. It focuses on accenting the UI. By desaturating our primary colors, we are able to still use a, have a UI color that works for the majority of the application. And we were also able to keep our branded elements, um, our highly branded elements that uh, correlate to the brand, um, in the same colors that they had before. We also decided to move the Google, um, the Google color, uh, the Google lockup, uh, from using the four colors that we are known for to only using one against the dark background. There are multiple strategies uh, that our teams have adopted in order to implement dark theme. I want to take a moment to highlight a few of them. I'm going to start with Google Photos. As you may know, Photos automatically organizes all your photos and makes them as accessible on multiple platforms. In light mode, Photos builds from white. It also, uh, and by building from white, they also are able to use a uh, primary color as an accent throughout the application. It was important for us to preserve the same experience in a dark theme. And also, it was very important to leave um, photography intact. We didn't really want to mess with, uh, with user-generated photography. So here's where, uh, here are a few highlights of what we did. First, we use um, a dark gray as a background. Second, we elevate different components, in this case, the search bar, um, a little bit higher with a white overlay, so it stands out a little bit more against the background. Third, we actually move our, um, our lockup to just using a monochromatic white. By using a dark uh, surface color, we are able to differentiate other components against it. Again, you, you can see elevated components above it. You can also see other actions that relate better to this gray color. The app keeps the application UI color intact, uh, the, the application of this UI color intact. And what do I mean by that? In a light theme, you may use a blue color as a primary accent. So that means that your buttons may actually uh, bring, the, bring that blue into the fill button as well as, a, as, as an outline button, button. We didn't really want to mess with that relationship. So by desaturating the colors, we're able to preserve everything in the same way just by making one color change. With that desaturation, desaturation logic, we were also able to introduce other colors into the theme. In this case, um, adding a red color for badging just felt right at home next to the blue um, that was already present. The Photos team worked around constantly, uh, <laughs> constantly and making different iterations for this. They also are working with content that is changing all the time. Your photos, my photos are uploaded into, into an application, so every experience is different. Their implementation of dark theme really highlights um, the hero of the app, our photos, and by making them feel more like a virtual gallery. Speaking of cool images, the Google Dream theme also worked hard on implementing a dark theme. And I've uh, and been very excited to see what they have come up with. One of the things that I wanted to highlight today is how they figure out an approach for, illust for turning illustrations from light to dark theme. I know it's kind of a tricky subject already, because illustration is a tricky element in a, for a systems designer. A good illustration is already sort of independent and has a lot of expression in, when it's done well. And it captures the audience attention, attention while telling complex stories in a very simple way. Adapting an illustration, needless to say, adapting an illustration from dark theme cannot just be an, automate, an automatic switch of colors. We wanted to preserve the artistic integrity of an illustrator's work and give them a set of tools to use when creating an alternative for a dark theme. Let me show you what we did. Again, I'm going to start back in color. In dark theme, we wanted to remain flexible with the use of color. So we, are providing, we provided our illustrators with um, a desaturated side of the palette. And uh, with that, we started to work. So here we have a hero illustration. As you know, a hero illustration has a background and a subject. Both of those have different approaches for dark theme. I'm going to start with the background. On the left side, you can see a background that is, is coming from a light theme. 
colors are, are saturated already, so they're hard to tell. They're, they start to vibrate, and they're hard to tell against our, a dark surface. Making those same colors darker is not enough. We are losing a little bit of detail on the, left, uh, on the example on the left. Instead, um, colors shift to grayscale. Uh, and we shift the lightest tone into its darkest count gray counterpart in order to avoid a stark contrast. Let's move on to the subject. A subject, instead, needs to remain the focus of attention in, in an illustration. And in order for us to turn it from a light to a dark theme, we use a desaturated set of, um, a set of colors in order to um, color the, um, the subject. We also alter different elements of the illustration to set up context in order to surface moments of the light. Uh, notice the, uh, the light coming out of the, uh, out of the lamp on the left example. The result is an illustration that can be placed on a dark surface, ret um, retaining important communication elements, like highlighting the subject as the main point of focus, uh, and allowing the background to provide context. The app also, features, um, uh, also has feature icons, or monotone illustrations. These illustrations were already using a desaturated side of the palette. So we didn't, really didn't need to do much there. Um, we, uh, wanted to, uh, we did some small tweakings on making some of the colors fall in line in the, uh, within the range of the uh, desaturated colors. But other than that, they work great. And they, they can still stand out against the dark surface. Speaking of color, uh, let's talk about Google Calendar. Calendar um, is an important part of the, uh, for calendar, col uh, in, in calendar, our users rely on color quite a bit, and for many different reasons, right? Um, so in order to, uh, so users actually use color um, to differentiate between multiple calendars. They also use it to, um, to differentiate different events. Um, they may even go into a light or a dark theme at different times during the day and in multiple occasions. So changing color was not an easy thing. You're already messing with a system that has a lot of meaning inside of the application. Needless to say, colors are actually perceived differently depending on their background. If something stands out against a light background, feels different than, uh, than a dark background. The calendar team created a systematic approach to desaturate user-generated colors by keeping the color saturation and brightness to a shorter threshold. All of these while ensuring the appropriate contrast on both light and dark theme. It's very hard to see, uh, it's very hard to notice the difference in these two colors, but it goes a long way to help ensure the text is readable against the color background in a dark theme. The, adjust the adjustment of all these uh, user generated colors that um, fit harmoniously um, also needed to fit within other primary colors. In this case, like we know that the blue, uh, desaturated blue coming for, um, from the Google Material Palette uh, needed to also fit with uh, these user-generated colors. Needless to say, these, elevated, these colors also needed to work in elevated surfaces. It's not only a matter of placing it at the, at the um, lowest uh, elevation, but also placing it at the highest. So here I highlighted a couple of examples of the primary blue being used for something like highlighting the day, and uh, the user-generated um, colors to showcase chips or badges on the, on the left side. And one more thing. The Google branded fab keeps the regular Google colors, and it feels right at home. It feels like a brand in there. The calendar team also implemented a very thoughtful approach for color on typography. The use of dark gray helps make uh, light gray text readable against it. It also uh, showcases a lot of emphasis and hierarchy. The result is, that, is an app that uses color in a strategic, expressive, and functional way. Speaking of functional, uh, you guys may have seen a little bit about um, Android Auto. Uh, in, if you haven't, I encourage, I encourage you to check out to the, uh, Tuesday's session, What's New on Android for Cars. Under Auto designed, uh, was designed with safety in mind. It has a different set of constraints, but uh, one of the things that really stood out to me is that they design with larger touch targets in mind. Uh, also, they need to simplify the interface in order to minimize distraction. 
Android Auto appears in, in OLED displays inside cars. And these displays have the capability of turning pixels off. That means that you're saving more battery. You're reducing the luminance. It also uses dark theme in both day and night. One more thing is that the car's physical conditions changes throughout the day. You may be driving today in a, in a very sunny day. You may be driving tomorrow in a very rainy one, and the lighting conditions change. Also, car makers tend to use a lot of dark colors already in their dashboards, in their screens, and their accents. So we needed to consider this case very carefully and figure out an appropriate approach for it. The first thing that we did is the foundation of Android Auto of the Android Auto color strategy is building from black. The team also adjusted the primary desaturated color to work appropriately for light and dark physical conditions. Remember the physical condition that I told you earlier. If something is too, uh, if we have a, a very sunny day, that light is really going to change the saturation of your color. So altering that color was very key. They were, the team was very, uh, did a very hard um, a set of many tests in order to figure out what was the right hue for that blue. They also implemented the elevation system with small tweaks uh, in order to make elevated surfaces stand out against um, this dark, um, uh, in, against this black background, and also to minimize distraction. Basing, basing the interface colors um, on black makes for a more consistent user experience for Android Auto and the drastic changes of lighting between night and day. In summary, material design dark theme is defined by three things. Building from a dark color, ensuring that that color has enough contrast between light and dark. Creating depth by displaying a lighter surface color as, it, as components move higher in elevation. And third, desaturating color and using it as an accent throughout the UI. That brings me to the last part of my talk, resources. We have prepared a sketch sticker sheet for Android devices following our Android Q support. Uh, and you can find it on material.io slash resources. We have also uh, set up a design lab uh, here at I.O. So you're welcome to go ahead and try it and take it for a spin. Tell us what you think. And we have also set up a project to help you get started uh, creating a dark theme for Android. So if you have Android Studio or you are a developer yourself for Android, you, you are able to download this code base today and take it for a spin. Do you have, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'm going um, to go hang out at the material design uh, sandbox right after this talk. So please feel free to stop by and chat. That's it for me. Thank you.